Welcome to the beauty of grace. I'm Lynette, and I'm so glad that you came and to this channel today to hear the good news. Um, today, I do want to talk about, uh, this is just something on my heart about uh, why people aren't going to church like they used to. Why have there been a decrease in church attendance? And there was a, um, a Gallup poll that was done um, and it talked about that church attendance and more so church membership have decreased in America. Um, they were also saying that we have, a, a, there's been a spike where people that didn't even believe in God or believe that there is a God that has increased. And it also has been an increase where even people that believed in religion, um, well, we know that Christianity is not a religion, but even Christians uh, are not going to church like they used to 20 years ago. And also with the millennials, very, little, very few millennials are attending church services. And this is pretty much worldwide, especially in our country. And I'm wondering, why is this so? Why has there been a decrease uh, of people going to church? Um, I, I, the reason that I think is um, we have to come back and talk to talk about Christ. I'm not talking about where we just talk about Jesus on Easter, okay? Um, and, uh, and then that's also promoted with uh, Easter baskets and chocolate bunnies and all that pagan stuff. I'm not talking about that. I'm not talking about just doing Christmas where we talk about Jesus. And, um, but then, you know, you got, uh, um, Santa Claus and 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 uh, then we have the marketing with the gifts and people buying gifts and all that and getting stressed out and all that so but I'm talking about talking about Jesus throughout the year all the time I'm talking about talking about Jesus having Christ-centered messages and that's what we need to get back to not talking about uh, behavior. You know, I've, I've been in church most of my life, um, and uh, most sermons that I have heard in my life has been about behavior. It's been about what we don't do, how to behave, how to act. You know, it's been like psychology sermons, sociology sermons, which I learned about sociology and psychology in, in college. But we're also now, we're hearing it in church. And these are messages that we've heard pretty much most of our lives. How to act, what to do, what not to do. Now, I'm not saying we can't talk about behavior, that we can't speak about behavior. But some, and some ministers preach about it through their whole sermon about what you don't do. And what you don't do enough. And then you have with some ministers, I'm not saying all, but I'm saying there are some preachers, they fussy preach. They preach on how bad you are, how God is mad with you. They preach those fire and brimstone messages all the time. They preach those Ten Commandments messages all the time. And really, and, and to be honest, uh, the millennials aren't going to stand for that. They're not going to come and hear that. People don't want to come in here about how bad they are or where they mess up. We know when we mess up. We know when we sin. We know when we fail. We know when we make mistakes. But we come to God's house to be encouraged. We come to God's house to get our spirits lifted up. You don't know what someone have gone through that week. The trouble, the devastation. You don't know what's going on in their homes. So they're coming to hear a message of Christ. They want to hear the good news. And we have to realize that the church is a hospital. 
That's what the church is. The church is a hospital. It's where imperfect people come that are sick or people that don't have it all together or their behavior is not all together. None of our behavior is all together. All of us mess up. All of us sin at times. We don't have to come. People are not, back. well, let's say this, back in the day, those people would come dressed up. You had to, you had to wear, you know, a three-piece suit, you know, or dresses all the time. And, you know, but that stuff really doesn't matter. As long as you are appropriately dressed, it shouldn't matter. You might come in there with jeans and a, and a shirt, you know, just as long as you're dressed appropriately and you're covered, that's fine. And we've made it where you got to be perfect to come into God's house. Whereas the church is a hospital. It's for all of us to come and learn and become and be healed and be delivered and be set free by God's grace. That's what I think is missing in the church. And one of the, there's a scripture that I want to give to you, uh, Revelation 2 and 4. Let me go to it here. These were letters uh, that were sent to some of the churches. They're written by John, but it's Christ that, that gave John the words to say to these letters. And one of these letters was written to the church of Ephesus. And Revelation 2 and 4 says, Nevertheless, I have this against you, that you have left your first love. So what Christ is saying in this is that you've left your first love. And who's the first love? Him. Evidently, Ephesus stopped doing Christ-centered messages. They stopped talking about Jesus. They might got, they may have started talking about, uh, you know, they got busy or talking about their works or talking about behavior or something. They, they messed up in doing something, but they stopped talking about Christ. And we're in these last days, guys, and I do believe that God is sending people to churches that's talking about Christ. I believe that's why God has given me this platform to talk about his son, Jesus. Because if you're not talking about Christ, I mean, there's what's going to happen. There's no deliverances that's going to happen. There's no breakthroughs that's going to happen. It's not going to happen. So I believe that a lot of the, a lot of ministers, we have to go back, regroup, get our minds renewed repent, which means just changing your mind. That's what that means. And go back and start talking about the foundation of the church is Christ. He's our foundation. And we build from that. That's what Paul did when he would start a lot of the churches. The foundation of the church was Christ. And then you build on top of that. So I know, I don't know, something, you know, we're just going to have to continue to pray for our churches. You know, I see people, sometimes they, they come, and they come to the church, they um, get baptized, they join, and then a few weeks later, or a couple of months later, you don't see them anymore. They're gone. It's just like it's a revolving door. They come in, and they go out. You know, maybe God can send them. They come to get what they need from there and then send them elsewhere where to a church that's going to feed them. And I think that's another problem is that a lot of our people, they're just not getting fed. They're not hearing the good news. Are you hearing the good news where you are? Or are you hearing bad news on Sunday mornings or, or Bible study throughout the on Wednesday nights or Tuesday nights or whenever they have Bible study. Are you hearing the good news? What are you hearing? Are you at a church where uh, the pastor is beating you from the pool pit? Because we can pull people in a pit as ministers 
of the gospel or we can pull people out of the pit. And our goal, and my goal is to pull you out of the pit, not pull you in the pit. So, anyway, you know, so we have to be aware. And, and, and the thing about it, God wants us to have wisdom. And we talked about that in my previous uh, videos about how important wisdom is. The Proverbs tell us about that. But he wants us to be to a place where you are being fed the word of God. Where even if you're burdened and troubled, you go in that place. But when you come out, you feel free. You feel uplifted. That's how it should be. When you know that you have been fed. Because some, sometimes you can, you can go. I've been in churches where I've gone, gone to church and come out. I didn't learn anything new. I, I went to church. I heard Joyce Myers one time say, you know, how, you know, this is the way we go to church. We go to church. We go to church. This is the way we go to church. Early in the morning. This is the way we come out the church. We come out the church. We come out the church. This is the way we come out the church. You know, and it's just like, we make it just where we go because it's more than moral it's morally right. But are we learning anything? Have you learned anything? Is you know, you don't want to stay at churches that are baby churches. They're on the elementary level, they're feeding you milk. And you know what happens when you become start growing and you still on milk. You're not getting full. You're not getting fed. And there are some churches that are like that. They're still on that baby level. They're still teaching on that baby level. The, the people there don't even know that they are righteous. That God has given them the gift of righteousness. That they are right with God forever. They don't even know that. They don't even know that God is not mad with you anymore. He's not mad at a Christian because he sees them as right, as righteous. He don't see you as wicked or evil. And then some preachers will turn right around and say, yep, God, that you're wicked. You don't do this. You're, and you're not doing what God wants you to do. And he's going to beat you and he's going to get you. And you hear this type of stuff where they're beating you from the pulpit because it's all about you. He's talking all about you and what you don't do. And that's the difference is you want to go to a church where the pastor is talking about what Christ has done. And even with this channel here, that's my goal to talk to you about what Christ has done. His finished work. And most of all, that he is madly in love with you. And there's nothing you can do about it. So, anyway, let's go to, let's see. Let's go to 1 Corinthians 2 and 2. Let's see what Paul is talking about here. 1 Corinthians 2 and 2. All right. This is this is what Paul said. Paul said, "For I determined not to know anything among you except Jesus Christ and him crucified." That's that's what Paul preached. He preached Christ. He preached about the cross. And he preached about how God loves you. He didn't preach about all this other stuff. He just preached about, he said, all I know. He said, I don't come with you, come to you with persuasive words, with clever words and clever speeches. He said, I rely only on the power of the Holy Spirit. That's what he says in verse four. But he says, all I know. Not to know anything among you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. 
That's the gospel. That's the gospel, the good news that we should be hearing Sunday after Sunday. And my last scripture is, let's see here. Let's go to Jeremiah. Let me find it here. Jeremiah 3.15. Jeremiah 3.15. Let's find that. Now, Jeremiah is prophesying that this is what God was going to do for his people. And I will give you shepherds according to my heart who will feed you with knowledge and understanding. And this is what God wants to do. And this is what is God is doing on today. Because if you feel like you're not getting fed at where you are, you need to pray and ask God, is it time for you to go somewhere else where you can be fed the word and where you can learn more about him? You know, sometimes we stay in our churches because of family. Or it could be because you grew up in that church and that's all you know is what you because you've grown up there. Are you there because my friend is there or my cousins are there? But you have to go for yourself. Because sometimes we can outgrow some ministries. Because if they're on that baby level, that elementary level, and you're looking for more, where you can learn more about who you are in Christ and about your righteousness in God. You might have to go elsewhere and have the Holy Spirit to lead you. The Holy Spirit will lead you where you need to go. Now, if the Holy Spirit doesn't tell you to go anywhere, don't go. Stay where you are. But the Holy Spirit will tell you all things. And he'll lead and guide you. You know, if you're at a church where you don't want to go, you're not happy there, it might be time for you to go. You should be, when it's time for Sunday to come, or Sunday morning to come, you ought to be ecstatic. I'm ready to go into the house of God, to, hear, to be with the saints, but most of all, to hear about Christ. And to learn more about him and the heart of God. To learn who he is. And that's why on this platform, I try to teach you about who he is. And the heart of God. And try to teach you the true gospel that Paul preached. And a lot of it comes from revelation from God. It's a fresh word, a new word. That's what we should be hearing Sundays after Sundays, a fresh word and a new word. But it's just sad when I've been in churches where I've seen where the pastor is not feeding the flock. And they, they don't even know that they're not being fed. That's what is sad about it. They're not at that level where they say, wait a minute, am I getting, I'm not getting fed here. I'm just, I'm here, but I'm not learning anything. Why be it somewhere, somewhere you're not learning? So anyway, you just have to pray and ask God. He'll lead and guide you into all things. So, but that's what I wanted to talk about today. Um, I don't want to keep have make this video too long, but it was just on my heart today on why we've seen a decrease in our churches. Um, I heard Pastor Jamal Bryant say uh, the other day he was being interviewed that I think last year over 2,000 churches closed 
down and um, that, that's sad. But um, I think the churches that are going to survive are those that are talking about Christ in these last days. That's just what I believe. I believe that God is going to send, send people where they are preaching about his son, where they're honoring his son. And um, a lot of this traditional teaching and a lot of things that we have heard and have been preached to us over the years, you know, God has now given us understanding and revelation of who he is and his grace and his goodness. So continue to come and listen to this channel and continue to, to come and hear the good news of Christ. And uh, I just thank you so much for coming. And if you're not saved, just say, Lord Jesus, forgive me. I'm a sinner. Save me. Come into my life. Thank you that I am forgiven. And now I am righteous in your sight. And um, if you said that, then you are in the kingdom of God. And we welcome you. And we just thank you so much. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel. And uh, like. And um, tell your friends and, and, and your family about um, the beauty of grace. And um, we just thank you for coming. And I'll see you next time, guys. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.